Today I'm here with Besmi. Welcome to the show. Happy that you're here. When I was thinking about our session, there's just so much that we could talk about. It's like a Matryoshka doll of, of topics, but you've, you've done quite a lot. How, yeah. about, how about you give us a little intro for the people who yeah. don't know who you are? Yeah, sure, sure, sure. So my name is Besmir. I've been part of the affiliate marketing industry since, I'll say 2008. So it's been quite oh, a while, like six, yeah. Yeah, 16 years. So I've started back in the days where everyone was running Google Ads with uh, ringtones. And from there it switched to diet, Nutra. And I think I've been in that every major wave since that. So from the old PPV days, the toolbars, Mm, then when Facebook ads got released, I was one of the first to run on those. Adult dating, which was huge back in like 2011, 2012. After that, mobile app installs. I'm not sure if some of you remember the days where everyone was running Mobile Genie and all those up, up installations, which were doing crazy volume. After that, we moved to native ads. I think we were one of yeah. the first to to smash those and we were under quite a few years and that's how which by network the way, was your how... first ref content and then from there rev we to taboo, taboo yeah. outbrain mgid ad skipper and every smaller one i think there were i don't remember the names now there were a few smaller ones that now they're not even existing anymore i think it was engagia and content ads Content right. that, for sure. I remember the rev content, you know, in the days when everybody was just trying to do as clickbaity as possible. I think rev content had the best ones. They had these yeah. mountains of money and these like millionaires who don't want you to see the secret trick and so on. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, yeah, yeah. It has a special place in my heart, rev content. Especially the info product on ClickBank, they were working really well back then. So yeah, like I said, natives. We were doing quite a bit of volume. That was one of the reasons why we started developing this internal tool to help our media buying, which later turned into the optimizer, which some of the people listening to the show probably know about. And then from there, our journey kind of stopped there of media buying because we decided to focus on building these SaaS products and from the optimizer and the tracker came out, Clickflare, Lender Lab, and so on. And this is my affiliate marketing journey. Then on the side, when I was running campaigns, me and two other guys, which, you know, Lorenzo and Jordan, we started STM, which used to be like the biggest paid forum for affiliate marketers, which grew into right. conferences of affiliate world, the online one, ad world, and many more things related to that, like iStack training, etc. So yeah, this is like a short intro of everything I've been involved in the affiliate marketing space, which seems like it's been like it. forever. Yeah. It brings back memories because when I started buying on Facebook, then I thought like, ah, why, why don't I buy a guide, something to hold on to? And it was actually an iStack Facebook yeah? tutorial. Yeah, that, that I bought just to like have a reference and help me, help me nice. going. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> kind of so fun. funny when we, when we go to events and so many people I meet, they got their start either from SDM or from a guide we posted or from a yeah. course because we released a few. So it's, it's very nice to see, especially some of these guys that now are like totally smashing it, are doing so well. They got started because mm. somehow they got into the industry from one of our articles or forum posts. Yeah. But would you say that your main, uh, your main baby now is the optimizer? Is that fair to say? Yeah. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Yeah, I mean, optimizer and the other products, but the SaaS products are are bread and butter these days, yeah. and that's all we do. So I think most people that view this know of the optimizer, but for the people that are not yet familiar with it, what's what's like the elevator pitch about the optimizer? Right. So the optimizer is a tool that allows you to scale campaigns separately. So basically, you need less media buyers to do the same amount of work and more accurately. So the first thing it does, it aggregates all your uh, spend and revenue data in one place. So wherever you're running, if it's like natives, Facebook, TikTok, you can see everything in one dashboard and you can see accurate data at the campaign level because it matches automatically on an ad set level and on a creative level. So you always know how much you're making or losing on a certain campaign. Yeah. The second thing is, 
Because a lot of people have no idea, like until they do their Excel sheet at the end of the day, and like, oh, I'm like, I'm losing money. Well, with Optimizer, you know, like every 10 minutes because it matches all the yeah. data real time. So. And that, that can take quite some time. In my early days, then yeah, there was also Excel sheet tinkering and matching up stuff. And so that's, that's yeah. of course, handy when, when you don't have to do that. Definitely. The second thing that it does is automation, which means that you can create strategies or automated rules that run 24 seven. So you don't have to keep refreshing your campaigns every 10 minutes and stopping, you know, things that are wasting your budget or underperformers mm. or vice versa, scale profitable campaigns or ads that can make more money if you increase the bids or the budgets. So this is done via rules. They run every 10 minutes and you can be safe that, you know, nothing will go to waste from your budget. And the third thing is a notification system. So basically you can get notification on your phone, on your Slack, on your email, when certain things happen. So if an offer you know, suddenly stops performing, or if a, know, a publisher is eating up all your budget, or if the spend is going too fast, like whatever you want to settle the conditions, you've got notification, which is handy mm. because even if you're not in front of a computer, you, you know that something is not going well and you can take action. And the last thing is, it has a creative library. So it's a central place where you can manage all your creatives across all traffic sources like Facebook and TikTok and native ads. So no more need to, you know, to have all these shared Dropbox folders or Google Drive folders. If you want to look for a certain creative you use in the past, you can go to the library, you can go find it across with all its lifetime statistics. Even though that Facebook account, maybe it's banned and you don't have access to it anymore, it has all the data that's created so you can start deploying it like right away. And the final thing, it has a mass campaign launcher, which basically allows you to launch multiple campaigns very, very quickly across multiple traffic sources. We have it for natives and it's getting released for Facebook this month. So to save a couple hours a day of metal campaign creation. This is like the main idea. Of your customer base, like roughly how many of the customers are search arbitrage guys? I would say, say these days, probably like 40 to 50 percent these days because search arm has had a huge surge as you know especially last year yeah i think we played a role on that when we did the meetups which mm -hmm. we made a bit yes. more popular but it's been growing people are making lots of money because it's something that can can be you know can be made into a process if, if you know what you're doing and it's doing well and from what i hear it will go well also, at least for this year. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hopefully, hopefully for a bit longer. <laughs> of course, of course, of course. But because I hear people yeah. thinking that, you know, everything is crashing down, you know. Uh, yeah. No, the sky is not falling. Right? Yeah. Especially now. Exactly. With the new... Now, I think it's... I mean, yeah. you, you, you can tell for yourself how long you've been doing search arbitrage. Yeah, since 2009, man. And the yeah, feeling so. has been a constant one that, oh, how much longer can this be running? So it's nothing new. And I'm not surprised that people that have gotten into the field recently that the question pops up. But I try to encourage people whenever I can to have, have trust in it. It's, it's been around for a long time. And I believe it will be around for a surprisingly long time still. Of course, if you do it properly, there's many different ways to do it. There's, of course, always a temptation to cut corners, to be a little bit too aggressive. And then, of course, you can uh, step on mines and you can experience clawbacks. But there is, for, for sure, a way to run it in a stable way over a long period of time. Even when we started, you know, uh, when Search Arbitrage started increasing on our platform, which was like two to three years ago, Everyone was saying, this is the last year. It's dying. Yeah, yeah. The more people they know about. But actually, I don't see it going down. Actually, I think it's, no. it's going up. Speaking to the search feeds, speaking to the networks. And I even think that with the newest like, changes that Google is making with RSO, it makes it more compliant and more user-friendly. So I can only see it going up oh, instead of down. So I yeah. wouldn't really be scared or surprised to see it for yeah. like 10 years. Oh, and one, one thing that I also wanted to lift up about the optimizer is you have a guide that is pretty handy, like a pretty ambitious oh, guide, yeah. like a 200 page guide for that like lists yeah. all the, all the different monetizers, how to set them up and it lists what's, what can be done with your platform. 
So I'm gonna I'm gonna put yes. that in the description so that people Personal. people can sign up for that. Yep, yeah, uh, yeah. It's, it's a 200 page guide. Yeah, I can send it if you need it. But it, it, it's a big one, as you mentioned. That's why we call it the Search Arbitrary Bible. It covers everything you need to get started, from setting every speed mm. up, tracking, automation, everything. And it's free, so you can just have yeah. read. Yeah. So, so the history of the optimizer is that it started out, you, you came from native, right? And then you yes, expanded yeah. onto the other buy-side platforms. Yeah, yeah. So um, that... Would you say, because there's people watching that are heavy on, on native, on each of the buy-side channels, is, is the utility, is it bigger for a certain buy-side channel than for others? It depends, it depends. I think it's useful mm -hmm. for all the channels, but in different kind of features. So not the same features mm -hmm. that are useful for natives are useful for Facebook, for TikTok and Google ads and, sure. and vice versa. So as you know, for native ads, there is a lot of traffic spread across multiple publishers and widgets, which can burn money very quickly. Yeah. So the main use there would be having rules and automation so you can pause this quickly. And obviously when you can, you know, scale up the winners also as quickly because they don't stay up forever. So the main use there is the publisher blocking, creative blocking, and campaign starts a post, and also the mass campaign launcher. Because on natives, people running search have to create a lot of campaigns. So having a tool mm -hmm. that automatically creates variations and combines creatives with headlines and different targeting options, autom automating that makes a difference because you can save like a couple hours a day. So this is the main use. I was about to say it's a no-brainer to run the source blockings. Without you're gonna you're gonna be burnt pretty badly. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. Are there are there equal no-brainer automations for Meta or or TikTok? Yes. So as you know, we have the same rules for Meta and TikTok, but it's not really like a best practice to really touch your campaigns often in Meta and TikTok because they do most of the optimization. Yeah. So while you can start and stop campaigns via rules, which is handy, because an optimizer, you can see not just the spend, but also the actual revenue from the search feeds, which help to make better decisions. So you can start and stop campaigns. I wouldn't suggest changing bids too often or budgets too often no. via rules. I agree. So this is not like the main use case, but we have a certain kind of rule, which is called a cloning rule, which is not available on Facebook, which allows you to quickly scale winning assets. So for example, like if a campaign has a profitable ROI and the daily budget, you know, hasn't been spent, you just replicate, replicate, replicate the rule or anything that basically is winning. You give it more chance by replicating. So maybe it gets other placements and other pockets of traffic, which convert better. So this is one use case. Mm. And the second one, which is a big problem for everyone running Meta is mass campaign creation, which we're releasing this month or hopefully by the end of February. Mm -hmm. And this has been like the mm -hmm. most requested feature by our users because I heard from many, many people with media buying teams that they waste two to three hours a day just creating campaigns. Because as you know, like on Meta, the, 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 the name of the game is finding your stuff and just uploading them quickly and uh, testing, 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 testing. Yeah. And also on TikTok, while we'll be re releasing like the campaign creators, also the same importance because as you know, on TikTok, there is a high burnout of creative. So you need to like produce and upload quickly. Yeah. This is what you've been working on. Okay. And the last thing for Meta is the fact that a lot of people that have multiple accounts for many different reasons, and they don't want to connect them together, they can see everything under one roof for optimizer and they can change everything from there. So you don't need to log into like VPS or a hundred different tabs and like remote desktops, etc. They have everything there. They can start, stop campaigns, change bids. So basically all the campaign management is done under the optimizer roof instead of logging separately, which is a big benefit oh, for nice. people handling multiple accounts. Yes, 100%. And for people that are worried about say they have several business managers mm -hmm. and they, uh, they're worried about that meta might see a connect between the business managers if they're all imported into the optimizer is that a valid thing to worry mm -hmm. about no. 
No, because from experience, this is one of the reasons that white people also use it, because there was never an issue. And maybe they had mm -hmm. issues, you know, by maybe logging in by mistake without connecting to a remote desktop or a VPN or something, but with Optimizer, yeah. we, we never had an issue. So I'd say it's really safe. Like in three years that we had Facebook, Meta, we never had one case saying, okay, like I got banned because we made a connection. We talked about bare minimum of optimization roughly for, for native. And you mentioned that perhaps optimizations are not, it's not the same game on, on TikTok or, or Meta. Instead, it would be the new clone campaigns yeah. that, that, are, that are successful. You can, you can always scale budgets on Meta and TikTok via rules, which is also important. For example, like if the ROI is, I don't know, like bigger than 20% and the spend is not reached like a comp uh, campaign budget, then you can double your budget. You can double your bids or increase by 20%. So all these kind of scaling rules are really useful. And you cannot really do this on Facebook rules natively because you don't have the revenue data from the feeds match accurately. When I managed campaign managers in the past, that was like one of the most common things to, that I yeah. had to like be on them about like, hey, this is a winning campaign. Please make sure to scale it, You're leaving money on the table. Or the other yeah. way around, it's also good with hard rules if you're losing money that you, that you stop the campaign on time. It's so yeah. super easy to like get attached to a campaign and think like, oh, maybe next update it will be better. And then you just end up losing money day after day. No, no, no. I also suggest to people to kind of have like a strategy before even starting the campaign. Like, for example, the same as the stock market, when you buy stock, you need to have like a stop loss strategy. Like if it goes yeah. to this level, I'm selling it no matter what when you are actually called and not attached yeah. to the stock or campaign. So just, you know, when I'd launch a campaign, I'd create the rules on whatever platform. It doesn't have to be optimizer. So you have some key metrics that you have to stand by. Then no matter what happens, even before launching the campaign, you know that when a campaign reaches this status, it's going to either get paused or scaled automatically. Or so you don't, you know, as you said, get attached to it and just end up burning a bunch of money that you don't have to. Yeah. It sounds like it's an easy process, but I, th I see a lot of people failing. That yeah, they hope for something. Yeah. Better, so. Okay. That's that's really good. So you touched a little bit about we talked about this that there's been a vibe like oh, search orb, how long how long will it survive? And maybe it's not as good as it was in the past. What's your take on it? To some of the people on our platform that I talked to, which are really big users, which are spending like over a million a month on the various ad networks. I mean, they said December was their best month ever. So it's really surprising because usually it isn't. I see more and more people not just joining the optimizer and using it, but actually like spending quite a bit. So it cannot be a bad sign. People are spending money and, and making money. Like mm. I definitely don't see it dying anytime soon. Plus, as I said, mm. like with the introduction of so it feels like it's way less spammy, like, or better, it, it provides better user experience. So yeah. it, it, it should do the opposite, actually, increase its, its life, its life expectancy, because it's more user friendly, there is content on the page, there is value being provided. So as I said, I see it being here for a long time. If you compare the different buy side channels, if you recommend someone like that wants yeah. to get into the game now, yeah. What okay, would you recommend okay. that they start? Things change very often, but when search arbiters start, first started getting big, big, at least on the optimizer, it was mostly like native ads. Like everyone was doing native ads. Mm -hmm. Now, native is still a big chunk, but there was a shift, let's say six months ago, towards Facebook, Meta, and TikTok. And mm -hmm. now, the last two months, it seems it's mainly Meta. And TikTok is still there. But there is a very high creative burnout rate. So you need yeah. to like refresh creatives very often, which means you need to have a good and efficient designer team to pump, to pump them out, like, you know, fast. Mm. So you can test them. Absolutely. Yeah. And place them. How did you go from, you run your own campaigns and you have the thrill of the ups and downs to coming to that decision that now I'm going to... Yeah provide tools instead. I'm going to step out of the game and I'm going to provide tools. How, how was your thinking there? I mean, for me, since I've been in this marketing game for many, many years, 
at a certain stage, it wasn't anymore just about making money. And don't get me wrong, like money is very important, but after mm. so many years of just like going wave after wave after wave, I just wanted mm. to test myself into something different because I like to challenge myself from time to time. So it was a little bit marketing. Yeah. We did ISTEC and the conference on the side, which is a business we exited. So I said, okay, I want to try now the SaaS game and see if, you know, I can provide value there and build a good company. And that decision automatically came with the other decision that I cannot run campaigns because there would be a conflict of interest if I'm building a SaaS that all the affiliate marketing industry is using. And, uh, you know, it wouldn't j be just fair that I'd also keep mm -hmm. running campaigns on the side when I have, you know, information and all the trends, et cetera. So there we made the decision with our teams. Okay, we're switching 100% from being affiliates to being service providers. So we're going to develop these three products, which are still in the internet marketing, you know, scene. And we, we will try to build like, you know, like a big proper company out of this. And that's how we started when it was like five, six years ago. And since then, we haven't touched any campaigns apart from, you know, test campaigns or test a tool. And that's about it. That must have been difficult. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From time to time, like I run, because yeah. we run Facebook campaigns for our tools. And I do like some little split tests and it sparks yeah. the thing. And you're like, ah, this is so nice. Seeing like just one headline, what a difference it makes. And yeah. we ran quite a few on our internal tools, which I'm probably going to share like on the email newsletter, like some very simple ones, but it's insane to see the difference what a headline in four emoticons just made. It was like 50% increase in conversion rate, just adding yeah. little things. In. Yeah, I love that. I love that. Yeah, I love and, and that you, you know, you can build a hypothesis and then the next day already you see were you right or yeah. not? Like mm. immediate gratification. You get to know right away if it's going to work or not, like in a couple of hours, in a day. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. We spoke recently and then you touched on keyword optimization a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Would you like to expand a little bit? Is that a part of the, the optimizer or? Keyword optimization is one of the main things that people do to optimize their search out campaigns. And this is a feature actually not on the optimizer, but on Clickflare, which is a tracker that really integrates with every major search field there. And everyone that is running search arbitrage, I think every major player is using it from what I see. And we had this feature, which is an automatic keyword rotation. So what it does, it automatically rotates keywords for you, a bunch of keywords to enter. So you can see on the tracker side exactly which one is really like, you know, working. And mm -hmm. probably again, at the end of February, we're going to release also the automatic optimization, which will automatically, you know, optimize which keywords perform the best. So you don't even need to touch it. And this is one of the things that one of the main reasons that a lot of people actually use Clickflare, just because, you know, they don't want to spend time, do it manually, append on the URLs, encode it, decode it, they just have a text box and it'll do everything automatically. And yeah, that's another thing for people running a team that yeah. I, I see there you also have to hunt after the campaign managers to remind them, like, when did you do the last keyword rotation, unless you have an autom automated tool. How are the how are the keywords ranked? Are they ranked on on RPC or RPM or is that a secret sauce? Yeah, I mean on the current on the automatic weight one, we are doing something internal, which yeah. we have basically used something that we have learned from seeing like many you know years of data how how it's been done like in the best possible way. So it's going to be like an internal thing, but yeah, all I can say is it works really well and. Mm. Apart from the fact that you don't have to remind your account managers, it just like it just works. Yeah. So Clickflare, is it fair to say that Clickflare is a it's like a competitor to Volume? Yeah. Yeah, it is fair yeah. because it's, it's it's a full blown tracker for affiliate marketing. Mm. And a lot of people these days are using it for search arbitrage just because it's the only tracker in the market that integrates natively with the search feeds. It mm. has a keyword rotation feature. It will have a keyword automatic optimization. And it, we keep adding search arbitrage related features because we are so deep in the field and we know exactly what people need. So we are the first to add things and maybe like other trackers and 
we'll try to add them later on. But yeah, right. we are basically like yeah, leading to innovation because we have a deep knowledge of search arbitrage. But a lot of people just use it for basic affiliate marketing. No need. It's not just a tracker for search arbitrage. It can do everything. Like if you run diet or lead gen or e-commerce, it works perfectly fine. And someone that's thinking like, oh, should I, should I sign up for Volume or for Clickflare? What, what would you say? What's the benefit? I, mean, I am biased here, but yeah. first thing, I th I'm not sure what Volume's latest pricing is, but I think you save quite a bit of money with using Clickflare and it has the same features and a few more. So you get all the search arbitrage integrations, you have the keyword rotation. And another thing that Clickflare has that not the tracker has is a built-in tag manager. So if you are familiar with Google's tag manager, you can do everything from within Clickflare. So you put our script and then you can rotate scripts. You can catch via JavaScript any kind of event or element. So let's say like you want to track, I don't know, like a form submit or a link click or a page scroll, which is, by the way, it's very, very useful if you want to, if you're running native ads. And you don't want to wait for a lot of time to gather like conversion data because it can spend a lot of money. What you can do is mm. optimize based on time spent on site or scroll depth, which are very important metrics. And it will cost you less money because you will gather this info quicker than on, on less amount of money spent compared to waiting for conversions. And let's say uh, like if you're running, I don't know, like e-commerce or like diet, which a conversion is like 80 bucks, 100 bucks. You would need to spend like over like 80 bucks per publisher, which is not sustainable. But if you combine a mix mm. of landing page CDR, scroll depth, time on site, which you can get this data from Quickflare, the other tag manager, then obviously you will make faster decisions and saving quite a bit of money. If people want to like hang out and get to know you, are you going, going to any of the upcoming conferences? Yeah, so? yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm for sure going to Dubai, which is mm -hmm. end of February, I think. Right. Um, going to be there for a couple of days. So yeah, I would be happy to meet anyone who's coming. If you're coming, it would be great to meet you also. Yeah, we'll have a beer. We'll have a beer in Dubai. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty sure I'm coming. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> cool. And yeah, I'm thinking about the next one in Budapest. But yeah, it's in June or July. So still some time left, but I think I'm going to be there too. I don't like uh, to plan 100 years ahead. I often decide like a couple of weeks yeah. before if I go or not. Same, but I have a tendency to go to the affiliate world because like there is this emotional connection because we created this conference and we found it there. So I, I enjoy going there, just like meeting people, meeting yeah, sure. the staff, etc. Sure. Cool. Hey, this has been super nice. And I think quite cool. very useful for, for many of our viewers to get nice. to know you a bit better, to get to know your services a bit better. It's also always great to get high level view of what the industry as a whole, where it's going, and uh, like the success that still takes place and will most likely take place oh, in yeah. the future as well. For sure, for sure. And, and, and also, I think it's also great for people that are relatively new to see that there are people like you and me that have been, been around for many, oh, many yeah. years. There are for sure there are waves, but just because they're waves, it doesn't mean that, that it's oh, going no. to end or so. You just have to ride them and find a way to... To get to, to have success despite the ups and downs and maybe even to learn to like the ups and downs that are there oh a hundred percent a hundred percent like everyone that is doing affiliate marketing should just accept well, this is part of the game it's totally yeah. normal even like the super affiliate that sell courses or they've been around for 20 plus years it's the same for everyone there are ups there are downs but the key is just to stay consistent be on top of it and something always comes out i mean it's it's a huge industry. People think it's like so small, it's a niche affiliate marketing, but it's huge. I mean, see, being for so long and also seeing data and optimizer, you'd be amazed at the amount of people that consistently spent over yeah. like a million, two million a month for years, not just a month or two, a few good months. So it tells a lot. Yeah, so, Besmir, thanks again. This has been great. And perhaps we'll do Thank it again. Thank you, Martin. Someday. Happy to be here. Yeah.